My brothers and sisters in Christ, as I was saying, let us unite ourselves today in prayer with our brothers and sisters in El Paso, in Gilroy, in Dayton, Ohio, and in every place where people are hurting and afraid. It is hard to understand this random and senseless violence. But Jesus calls, to, calls us to trust in God. And he calls us to overcome evil with good and hatred with love. We pray for the innocent victims in these attacks. We ask that God stay close to their families and loved ones. And we pray for peace. Peace in our country and in the world. Peace in our hearts and in our families. We ask for that gift of peace. So going to the readings of today's Mass, I think the readings help us to reflect on the meaning of life and the fact that our goal, our destiny, is to go to heaven. The passage of the Gospel that we just heard, it's interesting, isn't it? The young man comes to Jesus and wants Jesus to solve his problems with his brother over their inheritance. And Jesus has a very tough message for this young man. He tells him that he should stop worrying about things like money and possessions. And then he tells us that beautiful story, the parable of the rich fool. Now, in the Bible, a fool is a person who does not listen to the wisdom of God. The fool is the person who thinks only about himself and lives only for his own desires without giving any thought to what God requires. So the man in the parable is a rich man. He's a big farmer. But well, one of the things that we need to reflect on is that the fact being that he was wealthy is not what makes him a fool. There is nothing wrong necessarily with having money or a lot of things. But the parable refers to this man as a fool because he does not know what his life is really for. He's a fool because he thinks that accumulating wealth and possessions is all he needs to be happy. And I was reflecting on our Lord's parable. I was thinking that uh, the culture that we are living in, sadly, can be summed up by those words that we hear from the rich fool in today's gospel. Have so many good things. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. Isn't it true that we hear a similar message relentlessly in our society? That we can find happiness by having money and the things that money can buy. No, getting the right car and the right entertainment and maybe the right telephone leisure and pleasure. But I think we all understand that what our culture says is a good life is not really a good life at all. The problem or the challenge that we have is that we are surrounded by those kinds of messages. And whether we like it or not, those values and priorities start to sink in. We can live every day and never think about God in this society, just like that rich farmer. We start sometimes to worry about having enough money and having things that we see our neighbors have. But this is exactly what Jesus warns the young man today. 
He said to him in the parable, Take care to guard against all greed. For the one may be rich. That's what Jesus says to the young man before the parable. Take care to guard against all greed. For the one may be rich. One's life does not consist of possessions. Now, we know that Jesus understands that we need money and food and we need a place to live uh, to be comfortable. And we also know that Jesus wants us to have fun and enjoy ourselves to uh, to have a nice life. But Jesus wants us to know that there is more to life than material things. And I think that's the point that we have to ask God to help us to understand today. What matters is not what we have. What matters is God and what God wants for our lives. That's what Jesus is telling us today. We cannot rely on our wealth to bring us security. That is the wisdom also that we hear in the beautiful first reading today from the the, um, Ecclesiastes. It is a very realistic passage. Vanity of vanities. All things are vanity. So sometimes what we hear, what we are worried about, is not the most important thing. So all things must pass away. This is the nature of things in this material world, as we know. Things are here for a while, and they, they are not. Even our own lives. All of us are here for just a while. And as we hear in that first reading, our lives are not our own. No matter how hard we work, how much we worry, for all our anxiety of heart, and all the things we spend worrying, we are not in control. But it's, 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 we don't think too much about it, but that's what it is. God is in charge. And that's beautiful. Because God is all wisdom. God is all perfection. God knows perfectly what is better for each one of us. So we need to trust in his providence. We need to understand that God is that wonderful father. That he loves each one of us personally. He loves us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to die for you and for me that we have a wonderful life and the joy of going to heaven. So let's especially open our hearts today to what Jesus says in today's gospel. We need to be rich in what matters to God. If we trust in him, if we live accordingly to his teachings, He will do the rest. He will give us what we need. Life and life abundant. Not necessarily material things or wealth, but God is promising us that he will give us the things of heaven. The gifts of love and friendship. He will give give us joy and a sense of real meaning and purpose in our lives. Those are, my dear brothers and sisters, the things that we really need. That is what brings us peace and joy in our lives. So this week, let us especially try to reflect on uh, the beauty of setting the goal of our life in going to heaven. Let's think of what is above, as St. Paul says in the second reading. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. And let us try to see that heaven is our goal. And let us especially continue to pray for the gifts of, for the gift of peace for our families, our church, our country, the entire world. And let us ask for the intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary. May she help us to always know that our trust lies in heaven with her Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.